Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I've got another art video for you. Today we are looking through my third GCSE art book. So this is the first book that I completed in year 11. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, um, I'm basically doing a series of art books that I did in GCSE. So in GCSE I did four books. I did two in year 10 and two in year 11. Um, and collectively they made up my grade. I got full marks for my GCSE art, which I was absolutely over the moon with. Um, so I will leave um, a link of the playlist down below. Um, I've done two videos like this before, so I've already shown both of my year 10 books and everyone seems to really enjoy them. So while you guys are still enjoying them and still liking them and commenting, um, I thought I'd, I'll keep them coming. I've still got another book after this one and then I've got two books from year 12 and eventually I'll have two books from year 13. I'm currently in year 13 at the moment so I'm working on my second book. I've also had a lot of comments recently asking um, to show some techniques or some tips for GCSE art, um, things to do, things not to do, artists to look at and just things like that. So um, over the next few weeks, the next few videos, I'd really like to start doing more arty videos, not just showing my book, but maybe showing a time lapse of a painting that I'm doing or give some tips on how to make your art book good and things like that. So if you would like to see some videos like that, then comment down below what you would like to see and I'll be sure to do that. So without further ado, let's look through my third book for GCSE art. So the theme for this book was wraps. So this is my title page. I decided to do a oil pastel piece of a skull um, because this links to wraps because of like the human anatomy, human skeletons. Um, so wrapping of the human form sort of. Um, so yeah, this piece was oil pastel. It took me hours. Um, and then I just did wraps on acetate over the top because that was the theme. And then we did a mind map. So we always start with a mind map for whatever theme we're given. Um, I really like doing this because I think it's a really good way to stimulate your imagination and get some ideas rolling. So we've got like edible wraps, identity wraps, all different types of wraps on here. And then this is just a fine line of drawing on tracing paper of a skull. And then I've got some pictures on the side that link to wraps. Then we did some box work, so I decided to split it up into different colours. So on this side I have all different colour things, so this is oil pastel, this is colour pencil, this is acrylic paint, um, watercolour pencils and watercolour paints. And then on the other side I've got, um, this is basically you paint black ink onto acetate and then you scratch into it once it's dried and it creates... Um, you can sort of see the pattern underneath, so that's a shell. This is biro. This is fine liner pen with water and a brush. This is just black fine liner pen. This one is pencil, and this one is a paper cut of black paper. Got well, a paper cut on black paper. Then we did a chalk study. So our teacher basically created a setup with lots of different objects in the middle of the room, and we just chose somewhere to sat and had to draw something in chalk from it. So I chose to do these, there were these two um, mannequins wrapped up in a blanket. So it was sort of like a mother and the daughter or a mother and a son. Like, um, and the way the, the blanket was, it looked like she was protecting it and sort of wrapped up. So it links to wraps by that. And then I've got some artist links down here that are similar to what I have done. Then this was a bit of extra work. I wanted to do a textury sort of page. Um, so as you can see, it's sort of like a blue theme. So I stuck down some different fabrics, some newspaper, um, some foil, and I basically painted on top of it to make it sort of blue. And then on this side, I've done a biro study of some point shoes. Um, and this links to wraps because of like the ribbons wrapping around your feet and the shoes wrapping around your feet. Um, and then I've got some other things I thought could link with wraps. So I've got some flowers, how the flowers, like the form of a flower is sort of wrapped in itself. Um, and then I've got a mask and this quite obviously can link to wraps because it covers up your face. Then we did some work on bugs. So we have some real butterflies and like real bugs and cockroaches and all sorts of creepy stuff in our school. Obviously they're dead. Um, and we used them to work from. So I chose to do a butterfly and we used we used black fine liner um, to do the main bits and then we got water on a brush 
to sort of create this effect. Um, I really like this technique. It's not something that I have done like a huge amount, but I think it can look quite nice. And then here I've done the same thing. I did a larger one and then on acetate, I added some color with Sharpie pen. A lot of people ask me where I get the acetate from. I get it from school, um, but I have had a look and you can get them from most craft stores like Hobby Craft and you can order it on places like Amazon. So it's just called acetate. Um, I'll leave a link below if I remember. Um, yeah. And I've just got some artist links of butterflies on the side. Then I decided to do some photography. So on one side I have things that are wrapped up. So I wrapped up my little brother in sellotape, which I think he did quite enjoy. And then on the other side I've got things being unwrapped. So I chose to do an orange and slowly unpeel it so it's being unwrapped to show what's underneath. Then I've done an inspiration page, so this is just a collection of images that I really liked that are linked to um, wraps. So I've got like some flowers, some fruit, some people, just different things that link to wraps. And then on here I've done a drawing that's um, permanent marker on acetate. Then we did some life drawing, so we had a male model come into school and... Um, we basically just had to draw things in charcoal from it. This is the first time that I've done life drawing. So all of these are charcoal, except for this one, which is chalk. And they're all on massive A1 or A2 bits of paper, um, which are at school. Then we chose a final idea. So I decided to focus on ballet shoes because I liked the idea of it linking to wraps because ballet shoes wrap around your feet. And I'm also a dancer. So I, had, I have a pair of ballet shoes and I... Just thought it could look quite pretty. So here I've wrote, written down what my final idea is. Um, so I wasn't quite sure at this point whether I wanted to paint something or draw something or sculpture or anything. So I tried out lots of things that you'll see later on. Um, so here I've got some artist links to get some inspiration. And then a collage page of loads of images that I liked. Then I did an image analysis. So on this side, I've got the artist image and I wrote different things about it, things I liked, things um, like my favorite things about it. And then I did my own version on this side and each box is a different media. So we've got watercolor, biro, color pencil, pencil, that's more color pencil, um, fine liner and water, acrylic, fine liner pen and chalk. Then I chose to focus on an artist, so Edgar Degas did a lot of paintings on um, like ballet dancers, particularly ballet dancers, but sort of any type of dance. So I decided that he was quite a key artist to focus on if my idea was based around ballet dancers. So this is um, one of the images, one of the paintings that he's done. And then here I've made my own version, so the background was done in acrylic paint. And then on top I've used black colour pencil and white colour pencil. And then I've got some more artist links of work that he's done. And then here I have recreated the image um, of this image. Um, so I borrowed my friend's tutu and just basically created the same pose as what he has done in the painting. Then I decided to do some paper cuts to add a different technique. So I just used black paper and just used some photo, some of my own photos to work from to create some paper cuts. Then I did some photography. So these are my own ballet shoes and I took all my own photos um, in different poses because I was trying to figure out what I wanted to work from. I really like working from photos. I know some people don't. But I, I really like working from photos because I like things to be quite realistic, as realistic as possible. Um, so I wanted to use my own photos rather than using my imagination. So I printed off some of my favourite photos and have written about why I liked them. Then I tested out some different media. So this side is watercolour paint and I've written about like what went well, what could be improved. Um, and this was working from one of the photographs I took. And then I did some different media here. So the, this one is still, again, just watercolour, and this one is watercolour with some black pencil to add a bit of definition in the shadows. And then down here, um, I've done a creation using lots of different media sort of all moulded together to see what worked well. So I've got fine liner pen, pencil, biro, 
and fine liner with water. And then here I've done some more studies. So this one is colour pencil and tracing paper. And this one is yellow and um, purple chalk on black paper. And then over the top I've just drawn the image um, on acetate and black pencil just because I thought it looked quite interesting. Yeah. And these are again working for my own photos. Then I did some pencil studies from observation. So I just used a range of different pencils. Um, these ones weren't that successful because I think I used the pencil too dark. So then here I did some more and these were a lot better because I used the pencil a lot lighter. So as you can see, I did a lot of pencil studies because I actually um, in the end decided that I wanted to use pencil for my final piece. So I needed to do lots and lots of practice using pencil. So these are all observed studies. Then I chose my final photo. So this was the final one that I chose to work from. And then here I've changed it into different colors to see what worked the best. I actually decided to change it into black and white because it's easier to work from pencil to see the tones that way. And then I tested out some different backgrounds to see what I liked. And this is a mini version of my piece. So this is just an A4 piece. My actual final image is at school um, and it's on A1 paper, I believe. It's quite big and I decided to do it in pencil. So this is a picture of my final piece. You can't see it really clearly because um, the picture's a bit dark, but it's um, basically a really big A1 pencil drawing of ballet shoes. And then I decided to do some printing as an add-on. So I chose to do intaglio printing. I really enjoy doing this sort of printing. Um, if you don't know what intaglio is, I might be able to do like a whole video on it possibly. Um, but you basically get a bit of card. It's like shiny card and you scratch into it and peel bits away. And the, the bits that you peel away, like these bits, are the bits that the ink will then stick to when you print it. And then the shiny bits sort of remain quite clean. Um, so this is the original thing that I worked from. And then this is a print of it. I did a couple of prints. Um, the thing with Intaglio is once you've printed from it once, you can't then reapply the ink. So the prints will get fainter and fainter as you go along. So I'll show you. So this was the first print that I did from the Intaglio. And as you can see, it's it's quite clear and you can see like all of the details and the marks and then the second one is a lot less defined and the third one is even less defined um but yeah i've really enjoyed doing this and i think that is everything yep so that is my third gcse book i hope you enjoyed looking in it and i'll have my fourth one coming very soon bye